It might be a little bit muffled because I've got a face mask on. I'm gonna video my go at this wrinkle finish. Um, I posted it on Instagram yesterday. I did a, a valve cover that's got some scrapes on it I'm not gonna use. I did a test run on it. Um, got quite a few comments that it was a nice looking finish, which I have to agree, I love it. Um, so I'm about to do my new valve covers. I've got the little peanut valve covers. I've got the timing case um, surround. I've got the top cover. Unfortunately, I can't do the front cover. Um, it had a bit of a, a gash in it, so I've had to put some filler into that. So that won't be ready until tomorrow, I'd say. So I'll, I'll hit these ones first and take you through what um, the process that I did for the first one and we'll see how these ones come out. So firstly the can says that you do three wet coats a couple of hours apart but from what I've googled and what I did yesterday uh, which worked perfect is sort of three dust in coats about 10 minutes apart um, and after that you give it another couple of sort of more liberal coats and then you hit it with a, a hair dryer to get the wrinkles nice and tight. Um, I'm in Melbourne, Australia and it's pretty cold here today. It's only 15 degrees so I've got a trusty heater going in the garage and I've got the barbecue warming up outside to, uh, to cure these things which is um, 200 degrees Fahrenheit, not Celsius, uh, for an hour which seemed to work well so we'll We'll give that a hit. Um, so I've done all my prep. Um, I've taped up all my BMW logo and everything because I polished that right up. Uh, I don't want to have to sand it later. Um, pretty much sandblasted everything. Gave it a, a good a blow off. Um, a good wipe with acetone. Make sure I've got gloves on so I don't get any grease from my hands onto it. I had a few problems when I did the K1100, so the R100, I'm not going through the same stuff. So I'm making sure my prep is everything. Making sure everything's clean, nice and dust free, oil free, grease free, and yeah, I think that's gonna put me in a lot better stead. So anyway, let's get onto it. So the first coat, they say just a nice dusting. Um, this is virtually all I did yesterday as well. There's very light dust on it. This stuff absolutely stinks by the way um, and gasses off quite hard so definitely make sure you got your face mask. Um, obviously they say to do it in a well ventilated area but being so cold I'm doing it in the garage with a bit of a heater and I'll virtually hit them and then I'll get out of here. Um, I'll let the, the garage coat with the stink and just come into the subsequent coats. So yeah, that's about it. It's just nice light dust. Obviously with the um, the sandblaster you can get a nice keyed up finish. I'm using garnet, a 3060 garnet, which is uh, giving me a really nice key into the aluminium. Um, I suppose you'd have to manually do it if you didn't have one with a bit of sanding. Alright, I reckon that's pretty good for now. So we'll leave that for about five to ten minutes and we shall come in for the second dust. All right, we're back for our second dusting coat. So on the actual instructions it says to go the opposite way to whatever you're spraying. So I'll follow that one anyway. So I virtually went across so I'll go up down this time. See how we go. Ok, 
today. Here we go, number three. Um, top cover looks like it's a little bit wetter than the rest, so I might start with the others first. Comes number four. This will be the last coat. Just gonna have a bit of a look with a torch and make sure there's no light spots. Which I've got a few little ones in there. Nowhere to concentrate. That's uh, not too bad. So I'm gonna hit this with a, a pretty wet coat. And then I'll probably give it another. 10 minutes or so and then we'll get the um, the heat gun onto it. Looking pretty covered. Alright guys, here we are. So, peanuts worked out very well. Um, top cover, pretty chuffed with, looks pretty good. Uh, but the timing, you can look in here, the actual uh, wrinkle is way too loose for my liking. And you look at that one, how tight it is. So, I had virtually the same deal on one of the, the peanuts. Um, and what I did is, because I trialed this yesterday, I sprayed back over the top while it was still warm and gave it a blast with the heat gun and it brought the wrinkle nice and tight again. So I'll just take this back up and I'll take you in and actually show you the process. All right, so we're back. So as you can see, it's got that real loose wrinkle around it which i think you know some people would like but i don't know i just prefer the real nice tight texture that i got on that um the first cover i did i think it looks a lot better there so what i'm going to do is still got a little bit of heat in it while it's warm i'm going to hit it again and then while it's actually drying, I'll give it a blast with the heat gun and that should tighten the wrinkles up. First things first, it's been a bloody big day. And my beautiful wife just brought me in a beer. So cheers. And let's get into it. So you can see now that's just starting to change colour and look how much tighter that is. But that's the effect that I'm going for. So I'm stoked that you can actually pull it back and recover it from something that was not at all what I wanted. I think that's, um, that's pretty bloody amazing really. Alright, we're back to the cover. So I've done my little patch, nice and... Uh, 
nice and smooth now. Um, so I'm going to do the cover today in a different way uh, with the Airbox Delete cover that's already black, but I'm just going to give it the wrinkle. Um, so today I'm going to try something a bit different after yesterday getting those loose um, wrinkles and the fix that I did with the heat gun. I've seen other people do it this way, so I'm going to give this a blast. I'm um, going to heat the cover up a little bit with the heat gun first. Then I'll give it a dusting coat. Five minutes later, give it a, another coat. Uh, probably a couple more after that, five minutes apart. And then by about the third coat, I'm going to start heating it, which will give the um, that really tight sort of textured ripple. And then I'll give it another hit, uh, heat gun, another hit, heat gun, until I'm completely happy with it. So this will just be a, a different way of doing it, and I'll see if this works any better. All right, here goes number three. Sorry if I sound like I'm talking underwater, but I got the full mask on today because yesterday I had a little bit of a headache with the lighter mask. If I get this thick enough, I might hit it with the head with the uh, heat gun. We'll see how we go. All right, we might hit it with the heat gun. And then I can pick up any other spots with the next coats. There we go. You start in now. I don't know if you can pick that up, how it's matting out. Alright, it's pretty good. Still not as tight as I'd like it. So I'll definitely be giving these subsequent coats. So I had some paint left over and gave this another hit. That has come up awesome. I'm super happy with it now. So I'm just gonna let that um, dry with the aid of the heater. And the, while the, uh, the front cover's in the oven baking, I'm going to do a bit of a tester on this cover that I sprayed up first as my test paint job. Um, I'm going to spill some petrol on it because my last encounter with Duplicolor, uh, when I did the engine enamel ceramic, uh, this stuff here, I had a couple of fuel spills and it ruined it. Like it just blistered the paint straight away. I was pretty pretty unhappy about that so I'm gonna give this one a go now I baked this originally uh, to cure it but yesterday when I had the problem with the timing case around I gave this another hit and a blast without a bake um, just to make sure that I wasn't gonna stuff the other cover up so half of it, it looks like this half's covered with the new spray that's the original spray. So that has been baked and it shouldn't have, it might have a little bit of overspray on it, but nothing much. So I'll try this side first and then I'll try this side that hasn't been baked on top and we'll see what happens. I've got a nice fluoro bit of cloth, so we're gonna see if any paint comes off. Uh, this is 95 unleaded petrol um, that I, I use for degreasing. So let's give it a hit. Virtually as soon as the other one hit the cover on the K1100, it fully discolored and 
it was all over. So let's give it a good bit of petrol. It looks nice. That was about the point where everything dulled off. Give it a wipe. Actually, it's got a little bit, but I reckon that's probably just the overspray. That's doing a lot better than the ceramic engine and all, I tell you. All right, let's hit the part that hasn't been baked on top. It's quite a nice bit. This is the bit that I reckon will probably... Actually, it looks pretty bloody good. That's ridiculous. All right, let's give it some more. I'll leave it on a little bit longer this time. Literally the other, the ceramic coat, within seconds, it just went to almost glue. So we'll leave this on for a little bit. Let's get it nice and wet. Give it some good time to soak on in. By now, that other cover would have been virtually blistering. This looks like it's actually repelling it a bit. Oh my God, that is awesome. That I am very happy with. And it really has not affected the texture at all. I'm going to do this again. I can't believe this. This stuff's only rated at 170 degrees Celsius. The other one's got like a 500 degree rating, uh, Fahrenheit that is. And this one looks like it's killing the ceramic. For fuel, anyway. A little bit there, but... I reckon that's probably more coming off the parts that I polished up, where it didn't have a good um, a good key up. That's been sitting down in there for a while. I'll give that a hit. Yeah, that's awesome. Super happy about that. I don't think this is going to be a problem if I get any spills. Even the little sh shades that are coming off, it's not doing anything to the texture. The texture looks exactly the same. Thumbs up for fuel. Well, I'm quite happy about that and I'm more inclined now to rip the K1100 valve cover off and redo it in wrinkle. All right, fuel test done. Um, I'll do one more uh, one more little short spurt once the other cover has been baked and I'll show you all of them together and that's it. Here we are guys, all finished. So we've got the uh, two peanuts, airbox delete cover, the front cover and timing chain which I'm stoked with. That just come up absolutely brilliant, can't wait to see it on the bike. Texture's insane and top cover the polished up bmw all in all pretty damn stoked thanks for watching guys